Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video, first we're gonna check out Jay Cutler's physique at the age of 48, actually turning 49 in August this year. So this is him right now, almost a decade after he retired. The last time he competed was 2013 Mr. Olympia, where he took 6th, which may have been a gift, uh, a parting gift, because Big Ramy was also there, who was 8th, and arguably he looked better than Jay. I mean, be my guest, tell me what do you think. Let's say that Jay Cutler was a little bit more conditioned, he had that maturity that Rami was lacking. He's probably lacking it even today as a Mr. Olympia winner, but Rami was bigger, rounder, more complete, his bicep wasn't torn, like he was just fresher, you know, he looked really good. Also, 2013, it was a good year for Big Rami. It was his breakthrough year, it was the first year he has ever done Mr. Olympia and also he did the New York Pro before to qualify and he looked pretty good there. The guy was really bad though, he, he got it fixed a little bit later but you know it didn't really take away that much from his physique, he looked really good, especially his waistline. It got much thicker over the years but so did everything else, everything else grew just like his waistline. But in 2013, he had that nice weed taper, he looked really aesthetic, still big. 2014, he was even better, the waist was still very small, he was more conditioned. But back to 2013 and back to the topic of this video, which is not Big Ramy, at least it wasn't supposed to be. It's about Jay Cutler. 2013 was the last year he competed. He wasn't as good as he was when he was winning the Mr. Olympia titles, but he was still very competitive Olympian, you know, top 6 at a Mr. Olympia is still a huge success. Anyways, 9 years later, this is him. Many bodybuilders, when they retire, they just lose everything, you know, they just don't even work out, they stop eating high quality foods, uh, definitely not taking any drugs. I think it's pretty safe to assume that he's on TRT, and I'm guessing probably a little bit of GH, just for health purposes, but even low doses, health, uh, health doses are having some muscle recovery and muscle growth, or at least muscle maintenance. Uh, abilities, so he's, uh, he's, he's able to maintain a solid physique, like you can see the chest looks still pretty, pretty wide and full, like that upper chest shelf is still, you know, looking great. As far as the arms, I'm not sure if he tore right or left bicep, but, you know, his arms are not looking that great, they're looking a little bit weird, the gap between the forearm and the bicep is a little bit bigger than it used to be back in the day. I don't know what is the reason, they look like he injected some oil in them back in the day. I think it's left bicep, you can see right here. Uh, the left bicep looks a little bit uh, more like it was torn, but the right one is a little bit off also. He was probably using a little bit of Sintel, I'm assuming. Anyways, he looks great right now, he's probably like doing cardio, eating healthy, training hard, a little bit of TRT, a little bit of uh, GH, and there you go, he looks amazing at the age of 49 almost. While Jay is deservedly enjoying his retirement, there are other younger bodybuilders who are pushing their limits, who are uncomfortable, like Jay used to be back in the day when he was pushing his weight. Uh, Ian Wallier right here is 303 pounds in the offseason, which is 15 pounds heavier than his previous offseason. You guys know that I'm a fan of Fuad Abiyad's podcast, I watch it regularly, and this is what Ian looks uh, these days in the podcast. His face, like, it's, it's gotten much, much bigger, and I thought, is he just holding on to a lot of water? Did he just grow overall? Did he got fat? Because compared to what he looked like before on the podcast, it is a big difference. If you guys also watch the podcast, you probably are used to new Ian uh, with a more bloated face. You probably think this is older, but this is only a year ago, and this is also off-season. This is what he used to look like in the off-season, you know. His neck was smaller, his face was leaner, he looked more like a human being. Now, he went full-on monster mode. As we saw in his post, he gained 15 pounds from the previous off-season to this one, and is that 15 pounds of muscle? I, I, I don't know, I mean, I would doubt that at this level... I mean, gaining 15 pounds in an off-season for a guy that is already like at a max weight, what would that look like on stage? I mean, if you take a look at this, he doesn't look fatter now. I mean, his glutes look probably the same, like the back also. 
Yeah, the lighting is a little bit different, so you probably can't tell for sure, but it looks like he didn't really gain too much body fat. Like, he's probably same, or at least similar, to what he was like in the previous offseason. Maybe, if you take a look at like uh, the hamstrings and the glutes, maybe he's even harder now. I don't know, but 15 pounds at this level, that's, that's hard to believe, really. Take a look at his conditioning right here. I believe he was 258, he says that he was... 263, the first show, it was Tampa, I believe, last year that he did, he wasn't in this conditioning, no. Texas was the second show he did, he was 258, and look at him here, look at the conditioning and the mass. He was incredibly big, but his skin was so, so thin, it looked like he was pretty much maxed out. Of course, he can gain a little bit more muscle in the chest or in the back, like, it's, it's details, you know, like, he doesn't have, over, he doesn't need overall mass, he needs to improve a couple of weaknesses, like, again, his back and his chest, but other than that, like, he's a freaking mass monster, if he gains 15 pounds of mass on this frame, what would that look like, I wonder, I mean, I'm assuming it's not 15 pounds of sheer muscle, let's say it's less, let's say it's, 10, or even 5, I mean 5 pounds of muscle, you know how much 5 pounds of muscle is? Go to a grocery store and buy 5 pounds of lean chicken, that's a lot of mass, you divide that on his entire body, put it everywhere, that's still a big gain, if he gains, fi if he gains 5 pounds at this level, with this conditioning and everything, ah, man, that's gonna look insane, I can't wait to see Ian on stage again, I think it's gonna be it's gonna be a dangerous package for sure, and I think it's gonna be very hard because of all of the competitors. You know, it's very hard to beat guys like Brandon Curry, Big Ramy, Hari Chopin, Nick Walker, Hunter Labrada. Last year he was seventh, like the year before. But last year Bonac was sixth, and Bonac he came back, man. He came back, so I'm guessing Bonac is gonna be better than sixth. So Ian is gonna have to battle Nick Walker and Hunter Labrada. So best case scenario. I can see him, you know, cracking like the top four, top five. That's like the best best case scenario. I don't really see him beating guys like Big Ramy, Brandon Curry, Bonac, Hari Chopin. Phil hit too if he comes back. But basically, based on the size difference now, and if he brings the same conditioning again with a little bit more muscle, that's gonna be that's gonna be a sick package to see. I can't wait to see him on stage. I believe he's not gonna do a ton of shows, he's gonna do one show to qualify, hopefully he will win it, and then he will do the Mr. Olympia, and let's see, let's wait and see, can he beat those guys, can he be better than 7 this year, what do you guys think? Alright, next we have a physique update of Blessing Awadibu, and it looks like this guy has actually made some serious progress in the offseason. I was doubtful, honestly, I've seen his photos, and I wasn't sure if he actually made progress, but it looks like he definitely has. Now, his legs, that was his biggest weakness, and it looks like it's still going to be. I don't think he really made it a strong point yet, and I don't think he made it um, insignificant. You can still see that his legs are lagging, and I think it's mainly genetic, like the shape of it. But can he grow them furthermore during the offseason next year or in the next 5-10 years? Yeah, sure. I'm sure they will be bigger later on. But right now, did he improve his physique? Yeah, I think the legs are bigger. And look at like the, the separation between the arms and the shoulders and the chest. It looks like he gained more, he gained more muscle, but he didn't lose uh, the shape. And he didn't lose like the waistline. His waist still looks small, look at the joints on his, I mean his wrists for example, he has some really small joints and it just makes his physique look even freakier, and he's a freak already, I mean he's over 300 pounds based on what he says, he's not really a short guy, like Nick Walker is also uh, 300 pounds and he's much shorter, so uh, Blessing is a little bit taller, but still, I mean he's a big guy, he has crazy shape, also pretty aesthetic physique I have to say. It's actually pretty rare that the guys of this size still maintain aesthetics. Anyways, it looks like at 6 weeks out, he looks really good, he looks really conditioned. 6 weeks out, this is a great shape. And it looks like he's clicking really well with George Farah, his new guru. So hopefully these guys will pull it together and peak Blessing properly in the end. He will maintain his size and still get conditioned enough 
and it will just look right. And with his shape, I'm sure it's gonna be an awesome package. What do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. And for more bodybuilding videos like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.